Happy Homebrew Wednesday. Well, it's definitely summer. First kind of uh, day of summer, I reckon, today was... Um, Dino would probably argue it was yesterday, but I was inside a, an air-conditioned office. So, um, yeah, it was really nice today. Nice yesterday. Great to be in New Zealand and um, great weather for beers. Tonight, I was just going to check the uh, recipe there. Uh, what have we got here? Let's see if Gibbo's giving me the recipe. We've got another beer from Chris Gibson. So... Tonight, um, when we did the Misty Mountain slash I gave him a few beers, um, we did a handover. He gave me this thing, which I don't know a hell of a lot about, except it's called, it's called Roy. And um, it's a porter of some description. Apparently, according to this, it's all Gladfield's Fuggles 644 USO4 blend and some lactose cacao nibs and vanilla extract in the keg. Don't know how many percent it is. So um yeah, that's that's quite bizarre. So six forty four. So um I've had that in the beer from Liz, and of course it was in that Misty Mountain. So yeah, the fake Brett WRP six forty four in a porter. Uh was this the pineapple lump porter? Yeah, we'll give it a go. So there's a bit of a hiss. Pretty sure this is bottle condition, but I will go fairly aggressive with the pour. Yeah, so that is. We get with this lenses. Um, it's a really nicely carbonated beer. I think that was Chris's intention. Pineapple lump beer in New Zealand. We have. A confectionery known as pineapple lumps. I think they're made in Australia now, so I think most people will boycott them. Uh, they were a New Zealand snack. But anyway, long story short, chocolate pineapple. That's what this is. That's bizarre. That really is, Chris. Um, if your intention was to brew a pineapple lump beer, I'm getting that straight off the aroma. Some really big chocolate as well. Yeah, chocolate, a little bit of roast. No hint of any other yeastiness, just that um, chocolate pineapple. Delicious. Anyway, enough about the aroma. Let's dive in. You've nailed it, man. <laughs> that... That is a pineapple lump porter. I'm definitely going to have to give uh, 644 a home. A lot of people have used it. And, um, yeah, really nice beer. It's not super bitter. You wouldn't expect um, that with Fuggles. Um, being a fairly mellow English noble hop, but um, sweet, which is what I think you want out of a porter, but it's not too sweet. No real yeast character apart from uh, that aroma and a little bit of the taste. What I mean by that is it's, it doesn't taste yeasty. Rich chocolate. It's a banger, bro. This would have to rate as one of the best homebrews I've had from you, man. So um, congrats. Bloody, bloody nice. So just um, pouring off my Vienna Lager, which um, I don't know if you can make that out. It's fairly clear. Uh, this is for a Western Brewers Conference Vienna Lager comp. Um, I didn't get any placing last time. Um, got it thoroughly handed to me. Uh, but yeah, myself, Troop Dino, Sean from Megaton, and Tim from Huntsman Brewing, we're all producing a couple of Vienna Lagers to enter into that comp, so. This one is a bit of an experiment. This is some San Diego Super Yeast. So, it's a lager, but it's done with ale yeast. To be honest, it tastes a bit like a tui. Um, to those guys that are uninitiated with uh, a tui in New Zealand, it's, it purports to be an Indian pale lager, but really it's just some brown swill. Not that impressed using that San Diego yeast and in this particular brew.
I mean, it definitely tastes better than something you would, um, it tastes better than Tui, but yeah, it's not really quite crisp enough. So anyway, this isn't the end of it. This is actually was a, a Firebrick clone, which I found online. I did, I split the batch and I've done another fire brick that was done with WLP 833 or something, but um, basically the, the South German Lager Yeast. And it um, be interesting to see the taste test on those two. And I did another version that was just straight from the Brewing Classic Styles book. So, uh, and that was just done with the South German Lager Yeast. Which I think is maybe up to about its 15th generation. So, yeah, it'd be interesting to do a bit of a, a comparison with those two. But so far, meh. Yeah. It's definitely a beer. And um, I can't see it being something that I'm going to brew again for a very long time. But we'll see how the lager, the, the proper true lager ones, turn out. But I'm not quite convinced. And, yeah, finally... I've got a bit of footage of me making up a chugger pump splash guard. So if that interests you, a bit of DIY, a little bit of dry hopping footage and uh, a whole bunch of bits and pieces from me. Cheers for watching. Catch you next time. Cheers Chris as well. Bloody nice beer. And um, yeah, beer in a lager. Hmm. Cheers. As promised, we've got a chugger pump here. And... I've been running my rig for about two years now, and you can see I've just got an old bit of hardwood, a bit of queeler decking that I've used for a mount. Still going good, these chugger pumps. Um, bloody good. Really enjoying that one. This is the HRT one. Anyway, this is what I'm going to show you how to build, which I haven't obviously fitted yet, but that is our chugger pump splash guard. So I'm probably going to ditch that queeler. And I think I might run something along the lines of an old uh, nylon chopping board. So something plastic, something I can, not, ne not necessarily hose down, but obviously something that's not going to grow mould or anything like that. So yeah, you can kind of see, that's the plan. And um, there's enough, going to be enough clearance under there to get a bit of airflow. And I'll probably offset this back a bit. So there's a bit of that um, polysulfonate or whatever it's called, um, the plastic bit sticking out and then um, just give it enough clearance so I'm not going to knuckle drag myself on that ball valve. So yeah, I want to show you how to make a splash guard and I might at some point do a bit of etching on the top. Before we start, I thought I'd show you just the, the first one I started with. Now this is... The Mark 1 version. This is the Mark 2, and I'm going to make Mark 3. Um, had a few issues with this. It's just really setting up the roller and uh, setting it up so you're not going to get any of those kinks in there. So, yeah, hopefully it'll be a interesting video, and uh, I'll step you through rolling up a stainless steel splash guard for your chugger pump or any other sort of pump. So, here's our sheet. I'm going to be cutting that 400 by 175. And in fact, it's a little bit um, oversized at the moment. I'm going to have to trim that down, but I'm leaving myself a little bit of excess uh, just in case I, I get the uh, curve a bit wrong. I've also put two little nicks, my nick, um, either side, and that'll help when I line that up in the guillotine. But next thing to do is to prep that sheet of stainless on the guillotine. As much as it pains me, I'm going to remove the protective backing on here because um, when we get a roll it, I need to get as much uh, grip as possible and it just slips with that coating. So, yeah, we'll rip that off and get it marked up. Um, we we'll end up getting a lot of scratches anyway, just these slight concentric rings. I may end up polishing this, but um, to be honest, can't be bothered. Yeah, let's get it marked up. So I've just marked out the centre there and 75mm spacing and that's just to, you can see on this one, just to tell me where to stop rolling. It's a bit of a rough guide, you can see I've gone past it, I progressively do, but really wanting to 
try and replicate that the best I can. So the first thing I'm going to do is I have just WD-40 these before but I'm going to just clean off any excess oil just so I can get good grip and then of course I'll respray that after I've rolled up the splash guard. So first thing is I've got it nice and centered just like that and uh, we'll crank down these rollers to get some really good grip. Now from my first dud one that I showed you I learned, I mean I already knew this but I was a bit of a lazy bugger you can see that's starting to form already. The most crucial thing is that a bit like your grain mill if you've got one that gap between the roller right in here has to be the same on each side or what you end up doing is just um, shrinking one side and expanding the other so yeah that's what you need to do make sure that that roller gap is super accurate then you can start adjusting progressively just this back roller and that's what's going to give it its, its lift and to roll it and I'm just going to stop on the line just slowly progressively do it and of course keeping I'll probably do one turn, one turn, one turn, one turn obviously at the same time just to keep that nice and even I'll show you once we're halfway through so most importantly you can see I've got a bit of success here so far is to keep this edge perpendicular to your rollers just so that um, it doesn't doesn't shrink as I say on one side you get that uh, ripply edge very importantly is I put it always put it back to the centre and then I do my adjustment so I do my adjustment on both these two rollers just to get the just in order that I don't kink this when you when you tighten up this back roller you can actually kink it or fold it slightly so just tighten it up progressively and start with your centre and just roll backwards and forwards like that just a few times before you adjust it just to keep that nice and even so just when you're getting fairly close what I've done here helps having those registration marks I'm just checking that both those diameters are fairly similar because what I need to do now uh, just to even them up is to just extra extra little bit of roll just to bring this through to back back to 90 degrees so I've got those fairly similar, in fact I did a better job on the second one, you can see that's a bit more of a pipe, I haven't got that kink, but yeah, very hard to get them the exact same diameter, but I'm pretty pretty damn happy with that. So yeah, I will fold these up, get them set to the same height, and uh, hopefully, we, we, hopefully we will have finished the chugger pump covers. So I've set these two together. I've marked out my tab and the way I've achieved those tabs is just set these two together, mark them out and I've left quite a bit of excess so I can trim them off in order for me to get this straight in case one side or the, the centre is just slightly off so I can get those nice and perpendicular with the ground. So I've just set this up in the folder just making sure I can see my blue line just on the edge there and then I can fold her up Just making sure that it doesn't slip. So there we have it. Two identical sugar pump covers. I'm just going to trim some excess off and I'll probably end up nipping the corners off and just giving those a tidy up. Drill some holes and then mount them to my baseboards which I'm going to use some old chopping boards. But that's for another time.